All right, hello once again, Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College, welcoming you back to the Rankin Technical College Summer Adventure Academy. This is MIT's App Inventor 2. So far, we've gone through and we get, had an introduction to App Inventor 2, and we looked at the All-American Project. Then we backed up a little and talked about the All-American Project, but we also talked about how to build a project, period. So we're up to our second project here, The Boy Who Cried Wolf. All right, so I'm going to go back into here, and I'm going to go back into App Inventor, and I've already got my, my project, so I'm going to say File, Start New Project. All right, and I'm just going to call this Boy Who Cried Wolf. Remember, you can't have blank spaces in your project name. All right, it's just a rule of, of Android. App Inventor 2. So here is going to be our new project. Make this a little smaller on the screen. Okay. It's going to be very simple. What we're going to have is I'm going to start with coming in here, and as we did before, I'm going to come in and create a horizontal arrangement. And in that horizontal arrangement, I'm going to add two buttons. My first button, there's my second button. Okay, so let's go into the horizontal arrangement and let's set its width to fill parent. There we go. And then let's come into our buttons and we'll set the width in here. Let's set them both to about 47, not 47 pixels, 47 percent. All right, we'll do the same for this one. There we go. We will come and set the name of the button here to, we'll rename it from button one to button cry wolf. And right away, let's, let's immediately also set our text to cry wolf. All right. And then let's come over to here and let's rename this button that's not what I want to do. I want to click rename. We'll call it button. Just kidding. All right. We'll put the text on there also. Just kidding. All right. So we've got that. We can, if we want to, make this bold. We could even make the font probably a little bigger. But it's, it's fine the way it is. All right. Now, if we wanted to be able to interact, if we wanted to be able to interact with the image, when we could have in our button, notice we can put an image in there. We'll do that, but we'll do that in our next, uh, next app. Okay, so what I want to do is actually put in an image here. So there it is. And I'm going to say for that image, I want the height to be fill parent. So you can see what happens. And I want the width to be fill parent. So I want it to take up the rest of my screen. All right? Now, I, this is my whole interface, so I can rename this if I want to. So, for instance, I can rename this as image boy who cried wolf. And that's fine. <clears throat> the big thing, though, is I need to put a picture in there. So I click, I can click here, but you really shouldn't do it like that. I should come down to this media area here and click upload file. Choose my file, and if you remember, I saved this back to the desktop. And I called it I thought I saved it to the desktop. Maybe I did not. So let's check. Let's cancel from here. This was the picture, and I did a save image as, and I did not save it to the desktop. <clears throat> Let's just call it boy.jpg. All right. So coming back to here now, to my project, sorry, choose file. There should be a boy here now. It 
is okay and I click OK now it's not showing yet why isn't it showing well it's not showing because I have not said that's the picture I want so now I can click boy and OK and there it is all right now I can come in here and I can scale the picture to fit mm, does that look better I don't know if it does or not all right let's leave it like this and see if we like it like that or not so if we look right now oops sorry if we look right now that's what our app will look like if we run it right now now nothing will happen because the cry wolf and the just kidding those buttons are not operational right now <clears throat> so let's go in and make them operational all right and when we do that we'll want some synthesized speech to come in here so we're going to come in and look for the first time at media and we're going to go to <clears throat> text to speech and when I put that in watch what happens you can't see it because it's one of those non-visible components so it appears on the bottom of the screen okay so it's about time it's about time for me to go over to my blocks editor <clears throat> I can go back and take a quick look is there anything else I forgot well what I might want to do in here I don't know if I go to the background here if this is going to change or not this is all part of part of that so let's try to scale it like that let's see if that does look better all right I might even want to end up using a different image one that was a little bigger so it would look a little nicer but that's still fine <clears throat> so blocks editor first thing is I'm gonna go to my cry wolf and then I'll go to my just kidding so they're both in here now all right so what I want to have happen is when I click this <clears throat> I want to go to my text to speech and I want to speak and I want to give it a message so I'm deciding what is going to be spoken So I want to put in here, <clears throat> it's the wolf, it's the wolf, all right, and because there's not much to do, let's just go and duplicate this, we'll add it in here, and we'll say, just kidding. Believe it or not, we're finished. So let's take a look at our handiwork. <clears throat> it's the wolf. It's the wolf. Well, it doesn't like this. Speech, just kidding. Don't know why it wouldn't have liked that, but let's try it again. It's the wolf. It's the wolf. I could come in and do another text to speech, but I should not have to. There shouldn't be anything wrong with doing this. <clears throat> oh, I've got got focus here. That's not what I want. I want the click event. Well, that that's good because that shows us here how easy it is for lack of better words, to screw up, because that's what I just did. So let's come back to our button, just kidding, and use the click. Now we'll drag that in. All right. Now we'll jump back into here. It's the wolf. It's the wolf. Just kidding. Okay. So what you saw, <clears throat> what you saw in this application as short as it was was we first came in and into our designer we saw how we could come in and we immediately added a horizontal arrangement and put our two buttons in there then we came in and we added an image now one thing with adding an image like this when you click on the image the image has very few properties 
It had, we made it fill parent for height and width. We set its picture. The angle, I'm, I, don't, I don't even play with that, so I'm not sure exactly even what that does. We had our choice to scale it to fit or not to fit. And of course, we'd want it visible because otherwise it wouldn't make much sense. All right. Now, other things that we could have done had we wanted to. All right. We could have come in here and gone into our user interface, put a label up here, okay, taken that label, set its width to fill parent, set its font to, let's say, 22 pixels, all right, make it bold, and we could have changed it to Click buttons to run program, okay? And I can come in here and again come in and say that I want the text alignment to be centered. If I wanted to, again, I could come in and I could change my background color, make it something light, all right? There's no interaction, so there's no code that's going to go on with this. So I can change it if I want to. I can rename this to something like label program title. All right. You notice that I did not change the name of my horizontal arrangement. I did not change the name of my text to speech component. All right. There are a lot of people who think that you should rename every component in a program and there are others who think you should only rename everything that's in a program if indeed it appears that you're going to add code to it. All right, I'm kind of ambivalent. I'm sort of in the middle. So here it was. It's the werewolf. It's the werewolf. Just kidding. Okay. So that is our second app that we've created. So we've now gone through and we've done the All-American and we've done the boy who cried wolf. In our next project, what we're going to do is it's going to be called Hello Kitty Doggy. Right. And what we're going to do in there is we're going to actually have three buttons. And we're going to change this up a little bit just so it looks a little different. And what we're going to do is we're going to associate sound. Well, first we're going to take each button and give it a picture. All right. And then we're going to go in and take sound and associate sound with, the, with each one of those pictures. So we'll have three pictures, one of a kitty, one of a little puppy, and one of a kitty and a puppy together. And when we click on each one, it'll either purr or it'll bark or it'll purr and bark. All right, just so you can see what's going on in there. So I'll be back with that third project very shortly.